Hello everyone and welcome to the Yonex All England. What we're doing today is we're going to start the Yonex Stringing Masterclass with the international Yonex Stringer Mark Lawrence who is based at High Wycombe Bad Badminton Club. So I'd like to introduce you to Mark Lawrence. Okay. Hi everybody, and Mark Dillon says welcome to the, to the Masterclass this morning. What we're going to go do is take you through the process of stringing a racket the way that Yonex like their rackets to be strung. Lots of stringers have different techniques, um, but there's a certain way that Yonex like to have their rackets strung, and that's what we're going to try and show you this morning. And whose racket are you stringing today, Mark? Um, we've got one here for Carsten Morganson. Um, one of the top Danish doubles players will be in action later on this afternoon. So it's, a, it's an Arc Sabre 11. Um, it's going to be strung up in BG80 to pretty high tension. First thing we need to do is we'd check the racket for any damage. If there's anything wrong um, with the frame, we're stringing them at high tensions, it's going to show up. And also the grommets around the outside. If the grommets get split, Spring, strings exposed to the frame, that's going to cause breakage when we, when we do that. I've already done that on this one, so we're kind of ready to go. First thing we need to do is get, make sure the racket's mounted correctly. Um, if you do that, it's going to be fairly difficult to actually damage the racket. But if you don't, you can pull it out of shape, you can do all sorts of sort of things. So I need to use an H piece, which goes in between the top two grommets at the top, that actually spreads the load so that when I put it into, into the machine. And Mark, what machine are you using today? We're on the Yonex ES5 ProTech, so it's an electronic machine. That means it's very consistent, it's very accurate, and it's very consistent in the, in the performance that it gives you. So basically Mark has clamped the racket in this area, to maximise the protection of the frame. Then this is a constant pulling mechanism, so that will pull the string to the required tension. Um, Mordison has requested that the racket is strung at 34 pounds. Okay. So, get started. We're going to put a start clamp on the outside of the frame. And then we're going to pull the first two strings. So this clamp mark, is that just securing the string in this area so you can then pull yep. the string to the tension? Yeah, and we, we are going to pull every string individually. Although I've pulled the first two together, I will be coming back to make sure that the, those strings are actually pulled individually. One of the, there's three main aims when we're stringing a racket. Firstly, we don't want to avoid damaging the frame or the racket in any way. I'm making sure we keep the shape of the racket it's quite easy to pull the racket out of shape. Secondly, we want to make sure that we don't damage the string. Any damage to the string means it's going to reduce its lifespan. It's not going to last as long. And thirdly, we want to make sure that the, each string is strung to the required tension. Um, so everything that I do is going to be aimed towards making sure that we achieve those three objectives. So I started from the middle, I worked out the first four crosses and having got that far, I now go back, I can remove the start clamp, retension that first main and now I'm going to start working out on the other side so that we equalise the stresses on the racket rather than just working all the way across on one side and then on the other. Okay. So I'm going to do another four on this side and then alternate either side until we get to the outside of the racket. Now Mark is strong in most of the big badminton tournaments in the world. So he's strong at the Olympics, World Championships, the Yonex All England and the Commonwealth Games. And what string has Morganson chosen to play with? Because there's various types of string. Yeah, Carsten uses BG80. It's probably the most popular string that we use at the major events. Um, it's certainly very popular with the Danes. They almost exclusively use BG80. It is a performance string. That means it's quite a thin gauge string. 
and it gives you very good repulsion and control on net shots. Um, it's actually got a little bit of a textured surface to it which grips the shuttle, so it gives you very nice control over spin net shots front of the core. What you tend to lose out a little bit on is the durability. So basically the players are looking to maximise their performance on the strike. Yeah, absolutely. So at this level it's all about performance, it's not about how long the string will last. Uh, okay, we're getting towards the outside of the mains. A standard racket string pattern will be 22 mains, 11 on each side. And how much string and lengthwise does it take to string a balance uh, It's If you buy individual sets, then it's, you get 10 metres. You can actually get away if you're taking off a reel with about nine and a half. It's always better to have a bit too much rather than get to the end and find you haven't got enough. So I've got my own special knot that I tend to use for tying off. On that side, and then we'll go around the same on the other side. When we get to the outside here, I've actually come, we've done nine straight holes. I'm actually going to go in through hole number 12 at the top and reverse the two outside mains. That actually will, it slightly reduces the stress on this outside one and it also allows a shorter run of string around the outside of the frame when we come to tie off. Which is really just a cosmetic thing but it makes the whole job look a little bit neater. I'm putting these little bits of scrap of string in as we go so that when I come to put the crosses in I can actually get to the blocked holes slightly more easily. I'll show you that when we, when we get there. Okay, last way, clamp, release, and then to tie off, I'm aware I've got to keep the left hand out of the way, but we come through, one half hitch, uh, second half hitch, through, pull the first one through the second, loose end round the back, and pull through. With some of the thinner strings, particularly BG66, this string, some knots will actually slip back through the hole, but this knot, so far, hasn't let me down. We come to do the crosses, we're going to take the tension up a couple of pounds. And for what reason to do that, Mark? That actually helps keep the shape and the structure of the racket. Um, better than if I just by doing an even, even tension all round. Um, something Yonix have done some research and development on and they've found that yeah, a couple of pounds higher on the crosses makes for a better, better final job. So, we we'll start coming... And do you have to, sorry Mark, do you have to re-tension the clamps at any time or is that secure through the No, process? that should be, the, the clamps should be fine. Yeah. Okay. This is the bit that actually takes the time, particularly when you're first starting out. It's just this weaving process over and under. And through the far side, eventually. Where we've got shared holes, it can be difficult to get the second string through. But I tend to use quite a solid awl to get it in right close to the string. Push the string down towards the throat. Generally speaking, you can, that second string will go through quite comfortably. As I pull the string through, to reduce the friction, I'm making sure I move the string up and down the head of the racket. If you get too much friction, the string burns, the outer coating then becomes damaged. That's going to reduce the, the life of the string. So again, I'm going to put my start clamp on here, and we'll do one more. And just so you don't break the string, you're not a string breaker, what happens to the string is just left in the frame, you still play with it. Right. Every time you hit a shuffle hard, the string expands and then 
comes, you get this repulsion, it snaps back into position. Once you've hit the shuttle hard a couple of thousand times, it's still going to stretch, but it's not going to snap back as quickly. So it's a kind of a gradual process, but over time, the string's not, the, the string's not doing as much work for you, and you're actually having to do more work. So you need to be getting, or should be getting your racket strung on a reasonably regular basis, so that you avoid, say, you having to do more work and to get as much help as you can out of the string that's in your racket. Um, so, so as a general rule, would you say it's fair to say you should maybe get your racket strung as many times in a year as you play in a week? Is that fair? That's kind of a good rule of thumb. Yeah, if you, I mean, if the, if the string doesn't break, obviously if it breaks, then you, you're going to have to get it strung anyway. But um, if, the, if the string doesn't break, then yeah, if you're playing twice a week, then at least every six months. Otherwise, I say, you, you could end up with sore shoulders and elbows and stuff by having you having to do the work rather than the string. Okay, we're getting towards the top. So we've got some more share poles coming up. Use my arm to get through. So get up to the top here. If you are stringers, quite often as you're pulling the string through, it will tend to coil. But if you pull it through one side first, so I go, I'm pulling this all the way through on one side before I put the string out of the other side of the racket. It tends to stop that happening, or certainly it tends to stop it happening as much. If I lever, I'm going to move this round so that you can see. But if I lever that back, it lifts the string that's blocking the hole, so I can then get easy access to the to the hole underneath. Okay, so swing it back round to me. And that will tend to go through quite easily. It's safe down to poke around in the hole with an awl, which is, again, it can cause damage, which is the last thing you want to be able to do. And on average, how long does it take you to strain a bamboo to nothing? Well, the first thing I'll say is, being a good stringer, it's not about speed, it's about quality. Um, Obviously, if you're working events like this where we get lots of rackets, it's not much good if you're taking an hour plus per racket. Uh, we would normally reckon sort of 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes per racket, but over the course of a day, probably about two and a half rackets, two and a half rackets an hour. Um, so, for kind of 10 hour days, if you get through 25 rackets, that's a pretty good day's work. You've obviously travelled the world stringing at all the key tournaments. What would you say is your favourite tournament to string at? Well, this is the first one I started at back in 1994, the All England Championships. Uh, having done it for 22 years, it's always a great pleasure coming back. Um, I now know so many people here, so many people want to come up and just, just say hello. People that you only maybe meet up with once or twice a year. So I'd have to say the Onyx All England is probably the favourite tournament. Um, I have been very, very lucky. I've travelled to, I think it's now 20 or 21 different countries, mainly around Europe, but also to the Far East. Um, seen a lot of places and met a lot of people that I otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity to do. So. And do you find that the various tournaments, there's different string conditions? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, Does that create its own problems? Or? It, it can do, it can do. One of the key things we need is decent light. And here is, is, is ideal, it's fine. Um, we go to some places, it can be very dark, very dingy, can, which is okay if you're stringing one or two rackets, but if you're there all week, it's, um, it's a bit of a strain. Let's put it that way. Um, so you're obviously coming to the end of the stringing process. Yep. You're going to tie this off. 
Yeah, the last, the last main is coming up. Okay, tension, the last one. Clank, lock off. So, same knot again. Half inch once. Half inch twice. Front one through the back one. Take it around the back and pull through. When you're tightening, so you don't want to lose too much tension at the end, but you don't want to over pull this because again you're going to either break the string or you're going to damage the string underneath. So just to, to finish with, just straighten out the strings, try and keep them as straight as possible as we're working down the racket, but just to finish off with cosmetic exercise. Um, Morganson and Bow against the top Japanese men's doubles pair.